Eu saúdo a todos. I greet you all present also the ones that are connected to us through Zoom and also through YouTube with the peace of the Lord. I invite you to stand and we are going to open our Bibles in the book of Joshua chapter 5. Joshua, chapter 5. He's talking about the, the temperature inside the church. <laughs> Joshua, chapter 5, starting verse 1, says... So it was when all the kings of the Ammonites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over that, they, that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourselves and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the the hill of the foreskins. Uh, I confess that I have something else intrigued, but when we went to the prophetic service, the Lord spoke something else, and we say we should say it's better to obey than to sacrifice, and God bless us. We are talking a lot about Joshua. I didn't want to be repetitive, but with the gifts for tonight, there has no way for me to run from this passage. Since the verse first, the chapter first, we read and we see the people of God being victorious. After several years, underneath the yoke of Pharaoh, 400 years or so, slavery, now the people are about to receive a fulfillment of a promise from God that God made to whom? To whom was the promise made? To Abraham. So Abraham left the land of Ur of Chaldeas and he, he walked to reach the, 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 the land, the promised land. So Isaac, I, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Joseph was sold for the and ended up in G Egypt when the Lord honored him and several years there he turned himself into a governor of Egypt so he was a important figure and attending to an instruction and guidance from the Lord and God put him there and now Joshua turned into a connection between the people of God and the blessing the promise so he had the family, about 70 people, inhabited in Egypt for long. And after 400 years, God called Moses from Egypt to come back to Canaan. So see how God acts, how many years after the promise, and he is still fulfilling. And now in the chapter 3 of Joshua, we can see people already about to enter at hand so the chapter 3 is good to for us to see the situation of the people and if we meditate 
And if we bring that to our days, all these features and qualifications are not going to say the uh, requested, but I'll say that is also bringing to our daily lives. It's something important for the ones that like to inheriting the eternal life, for the, the faithful church, for us, for the Pompanus church, for example. So these, these features are supposed to be followed and we cannot say that, we, we cannot ignore that. So in the chapter 3, we see all the instructions given to Joshua. You're going to wake up early and you're going to ordain for the ark to go in front of the people. It should have a distance between the ark and the people. Teach the people how to behave to follow the ark. It's something new. They're not used to follow the ark. What did they, they follow before the ark? The, the cloud, the, the cloud in the, during the day and the column of fire during the night. During the, the walk in the desert, the crossing of the desert, the Lord provided this blessing, a column of cloud to bring shade during the day and in the night, a column of fire to warm them up and to show them the way where they should go. And now the ark comes. It's time to, to watch for the, what the Lord is trying to teach. The ark talks about the presence of the Lord. And God said to Josh, Joshua, now this is my instruction. Tell the people to follow the ark, brethren. This for us is a act of God. What does the ark talk about? What was inside the ark? The rod of Aaron, the table of the law, and a portion of manna. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the law talks about the Father, the manna, talking about Jesus, F Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The manna talks about Jesus, the bread of life, and the rod of Aaron talks about the Holy Spirit. So the ark is the presence of, the, of God present in the Trinity within the people. So now the church needs to be these characteristics to be conducted by the Trinity, by the Father, by the Son, and the Holy Spirit. At this moment that we live, we cannot be distracted. When the Lord call, come here, step up. Any time that moment can happen, uh, collectively or individually. Any time you are about to receive a blessing of God, so you have to be watchful. And you have to follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Not whatever is in your heart or in your will, but to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. The people now learn that. And in other important points, in the chapter 3, it talks about the obedience, the directions of the Holy Spirit. They waited three days to enter, per se, talking about the, the Jordan. Last night in the service, Pastor Sabado says, talks about the flood. It was time that the, the snow started to melting, to melt and the, uh, upon the mountain. So the, the area of the river, the bed of the river will be larger and there will be a flood moment. It was not a moment, uh, logically talking, 
to cross the, the Jordan. But when God, listen, from God, the, the, priest, the priesthood uh, heard the instruction of the Lord and they stepped on the water, the river opens and the people crossed it in a dry land, in a dry feet. So same thing happened when people left Egypt and the Red Sea. Moses extended the rod and the Red Sea opened and the, the waters opened. So you see these requests, these instructions and the, the precincts that the Lord asked us to allow God and the Holy Spirit to, to act with his acts of justice, preparing the church for the rapture. This is something that we cannot, cannot be distracted any time. We cannot let that go and we cannot be distracted. After they cross the Jordan will be the promised land. And in the chapter 5 says, when their people crossed the, the, the Jordan River from the last, and the other people, like Jericho, was about two miles from their crossing in the river, fortified city, strong city, with a strong army. When they heard that was what we read tonight. So when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and they all and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard all the kings, all the people from the cities, all the population around that was the, the promised land. When they heard that Joshua and his people crossed it, the Jordan. They were impressed. They were astonished. Why? Because they noticed that there was power. There was power of God upon these people. They did not see any feature or any anything in Joshua per se. And by the history, 40 years ago, God, the same God has opened the Red Sea. And now when Joshua approached to the Jordan River, the news ran fast, right? Even the bad news for them was bad news. So Joshua, before he crossed, they heard Joshua and his people is coming. Huh? And every, some might think, ah, that's okay. We're going to prepare ourselves. First, he's going to wait for Jordan River to go down so we have some weeks to prepare ourselves. Imagine. That's why the Word of God says they were, they were like astonished. They, they felt, they dismayed when they heard. They never expected that Joshua who crossed the river during the flood. There's no logic in that. That never happened. That's why when God determines something for your life, that's why when God talks to you, just answer, just obey. Do not be in doubt. This is a characteristic of the servant of the Lord. God tell something and the servant respond here I am O Lord Solomon also answered to the Lord Samuel <laughs> last week I mixed up Joshua <laughs> and Caleb and this week I'm mixing Solomon with Samuel I think this is a result of the COVID my memory is not as before. I'm confused. Be careful. I cannot bang the head against the wall. If I start to do that, take me to the hospital, please. So 
So when God tells you to do something, just obey. It might be the worst thing that you heard. It might be something that you be like, wow. But if God say to you, just obey because it's for your good. But for this, you need to understand the mystery of faith, of the faith. When you obey, you are showing that you have faith. This is what the church needs. This is a feature of the faithful church. This is something that we need to understand and practice. We are the church of the soon. Anytime we're going to hear the sound of the trumpet and we will be departing, the river, the Jordan River will open and we're going to cross it. The world will stay behind and we will be forever in the arms of our Lord. Don't be skeptical because the Word of God grants us this, assure this, the promise, the prophecies. The prophet stays. Moses was left behind, but the prophecy fulfilled. Abraham passed. Isaac, Joseph, and his children passed, but the promise of God stand. And now we see the fulfillment allowing the people to take possession of what God has promised to them, the promised land. Now, when all the kings and all the people around, they were enemies because they were on the way and God they gave instructions to combat them. So, as they heard that after three days they crossed the river, they were like worried, concerned. They, would, they, they badly believed. So the enemy was embarrassed, was ashamed. So God has given us this opportunity also to make the enemy of our souls to feel ashamed. When you fulfill, when you obey the word of God, the enemy weakens. And he, because he has, like, losing the battle. Because God is the God of supernatural the people were there Joshua crossed the river the Jordan and about two two million of people including children uh, women and children they they camp out in the other side of the river close to Jericho And now, it was just to prepare the weapons and prepare the armies and invade Jericho. Jericho was spied by two men that went there and met Rahab. So they noticed that the city was very strong, but they say, it's ours. So he, they, they, they met Rahab, and she also attended the call of God. She put the scarlet ribbon to identify her house. And now Joshua, about to enter in Jericho, that will be the first conquest, conquering. And he didn't know how God would do. He was a general of war. He was ready to fight man to man. But now, what God tell them to do? We know. What is it? So, the instruction is to circumcise the, the children. Everybody here knows what is the circumcision, right? It was a symbol of the pact that God made with Abraham. So after that, all the Jewish men needs to be circumcised. It was a, a habit, a cultural thing that belongs to a pact with God. But since the people left the Egypt, since the last circumcision was before the Passover, back in Egypt, 
Do you remember about when? Before they leave Egypt. So since then, there was no circumcision. So let's read the verse 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua Verse 5, for all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. So 40-something years, no circumcisions until the conquering of the promised land there was a gap of non-circumcision. The fulfillment of this instruction of the Lord. So all the men during this period, they were, they were without being circumcised. And now the Lord says, Moses, do this now. Put in, put in place this instruction. And I'll say now, as more as you can forget your commitment, your what you promised, what you vowed to the Lord. Remember when you came to the presence of the Lord, when you very joyfully, I'll serve you, I'll follow you. So when you have your first experience, so the first time you, you listen to the voice of the Lord, you went out with the church, you start to love all the believers, you didn't know anything, but the Lord s spoke to you and he said, this is what I want for my life, and I'll serve the Lord to the rest of my days. Remember something like that, everyone? In this first moment, you lift up your hands and you said, I accept Jesus. Or back then, sometimes you come to the pulpit and you kneel down at the end of the church. There was an appealing moment and they, there was a great blessing. So people cried. A lot of people got this period. But since then, you have your first experience with the Lord. Until now. With all the flaw, all the forgiveness, all the, the things that you let go, all the breaches that you did in disobedience to the Lord, but today... To enter the promised land, to be a her of the eternity, you need to obey the Lord. Nobody will go to heaven if they don't have everything in order with God. That's why God said to Joshua, circumcise the people. And you might think, like, what a awkward thing. Joshua will need a home to go in a war. The men. You need uh, soldiers, warriors, valiants. And now God says, circumcise all the men about to go out in the war. If, I, if it was me, I'll, I'll say, Lord, let's talk about this. Don't you think that we should do that before? Some days before? Can we do that after? Don't you think that is out of time? The men are ready to go and fight. Does it look that it's right? But God acts within the impossible. God make what we never do it by logic. God forgive people that I will never forgive. God thinks in His ways, naturally, within what is 
desperation for us. Listen to that. Let's not go far from this. God met Joseph back in the dungeon in Pharaoh's palace and spoke with him and used him to discern a dream from the Pharaoh has and gave him the recognition that he needs to be the governor of Egypt. So God set up meetings and encounters in places that we, by logic, we we'll never do it. With Daniel, for example, was in the, the lion's den. So imagine Daniel inside the lion's den. And he could say, Hey, God, you forgive me. You, for, you, left, him, you, you left me behind. You're forsaking me. But it was there that God has a good encounter with him. God has set up an appointment with the friends of Daniel where? In the furnace. Inside of a furnace that was seven times hotter. God do that. God does that. And he acts within the impossible. If we look here, it's everything against the logic. It was di difficult for Joshua to understand all that. He, what, is, what does he have? He has like a few men, some uh, about 40 years old. Because those are the men that are born when they left Egypt. So how many people left Egypt? How many men left Egypt? About 600,000. So when the Bible talks about men, it's the, the mature man able to go to the war, not counting the children or very youth. So when God talks about man, he's talking about someone that reached out the adulthood. So from all that left Egypt, more than 20 years, how many could enter the promised land? Last night, we heard that. Two. Joshua and Caleb. But 20 years and below, all of them entered the promised land. Joshua and Caleb and thousands of people below 20 years old. That's what the Bible says. Verse 6 says, For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, until all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord has sworn to them, to their fathers, that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons whom he raised up in their place for they were uncircumcised until then because they had not been circumcised on the on the way so numbers 14:22 says numbers 14:22 all the men that saw my glory and the, the signs that I did in Egypt and didn't obey my voice, they will not see the, the land that I promised to their fathers and have put me to test. Now, these ten times I have not held, uh, heeded my voice. Then certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me but my servant Caleb because he was a different spirit. So God has preserved it. Man able to go to war. So from the adult ones, it was Joshua and Caleb only, but all the others were younger. So that's why when they arrived there, it was two million of people. So it was a considerable number of men prepared to go to war. Twenty 
between 20 and 40 years old. There was some that reached 60 years. Caleb has 85 back then. And Joshua about the same age. And now Joshua worried about what God would do. And if he, if he say, Lord, is this a command? Uh, he didn't ask. I'm just making my question here. But it was a very difficult situation, right? Who normally would do that? Let's, let's think with uh, logic. Nobody would do it by the logic, humanly talking. But the one that acts by faith, the one that listens to the voice of the Lord, the ones that walk in the presence of the Lord will do it because if the Lord has determined, this is the victory. Joshua might say, God, Jericho is there, the army is there, and imagine these people try to attack us before we attack them so we're going to take them in a very bad situation unable to to fight it will be a disaster they could think that lord uh, he might think can we do before uh, after as we didn't do before how many times we question that not as joshua but based on what I mentioned here. How many times you have asked the Lord, are you sure you want me to do this? Do I need to obey to that instruction? There's no way. Can we negotiate this? Can you forget that for now? No. There's no way. The, the commitment with, with God needs to be up to date in order for us to receive the blessing so they can take possession of the land. It was not just let's step it on the land and go away. No, they need to conquer. Canaan was there, but they need to show the people that was there. It was not just step it on and the, t the land is ours. No, there will be a fight. There will be an action, a lot of tasks, several victories people received from God until they conquer literally so what does the, the the Jordan the river talks about it talks about Jesus when you cross the the river the Jordan as we accept Jesus as our Savior we are in a constant battle we are about to reach the last task of the promise which is enter the heavens but until we find, we, we reach out, we need to follow the Lord, follow the ark, listen to the voice of the Lord, and attend God's commandments. Even if they are very difficult, even if they doesn't look logical, even if it hurts, even if it goes against the logical, the human reasoning, in our way to look, looks impossible. But if God say do it we need to forget our feelings our hearts our sentiments our reasoning and listen only to the voice of the holy spirit and this will grant us to enter the eternal life joshua the bible says that he obeyed without questioning i in any moment, Joshua did what I mentioned here that I, I would do if I was me, if, if I'm Joshua. So Joshua started to immediately following God's commands. And after circumcised everyone, they were waiting in the, the camp for them to, to heal. And God hold the enemy. They didn't come until they were totally healed. So you might see something in front of you that might be a, an obstacle, a threat, threatening. You are ready. You you are, you're thinking that you need to fight, but God hold off the, the enemy. And nobody came to attack them, and they had time to heal. And God says to Joshua, Today, 
I remove the shame from Egypt from you. So the name of that place we call Jugo. So that day, God renew and, and, and re enhance the promise with him, with the people. So God made everything from fresh. So for 40 years you didn't do what I, I tell you to do, the circumcision, but now you did, you, you put your, your house in order, I will, I'll remove the shame and all the embarrassment and all the situations that might cause problems for you to be victorious. The, God wants to do the same thing tonight in this service, during the service. God wants to remove anything that is in between us and the promise of God. A doubt, uh, an anxiousness, anything that causes us to move forward and to step in the promised land, to take possession of God have promised you, to conquer the, your salvation in Jesus Christ forever, eternally. So it's not just saying, I have seen miracles, I have seen signs, I have seen extraordinary things in Pompano, a servant is being blessed, a family is being blessed. No, tonight, from, from now on, God wants you to have your own experience. So starting today, you listen from the Lord, Joshua. Everything is all right. Let's move on. Let's move forward. Let's march it in. Let's follow the ark because this is what God has for our lives. To obey and to conquer and to be victorious. So at the end, God gave to them the blessing to the people and they they start to celebrate the Passover back again so now the Lord is moving among them new life new phase and God blessing his people and allowing the people to obey his commandments as a warranty of victory so may this message the service can give us the assurance that doing that will be rich what God has prepared for us. Only through the obedience, only through the faith in God who will be very victorious. Let's sing a song to the Lord.
Amém, Senhor. in this place. We exalt you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of the brothers or sisters from the Zoom can open the mic and glorify the name of the Lord. Lord, thank you for the conditions that you have given us to feel the renewal of this, this hope that Maranatha will fulfill in our lives. That's why we anxiously waiting for that. And this bring us to our heart, bring to our hearts the desire to serve you more and more. We are grateful for this blessing, for this promise of the fulfillment of this promise. We bless you, your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers, um, Lord, we bless you, O oh Lord, for the opportunity to have you to conduct us, to have your Holy Spirit, your sweet Spirit, speaking to our hearts, <coughs> giving us a strong spiritual food to strengthen us during this walk. And we bless you as you have renewed their hope in our hearts. You have added faith to our hearts and the assurance of eternal life. The assurance that we are on the right way and soon will be with you. We bless you for we are hers of this promised land that flows milk and honey, where we will have our rest and eternal joy with you, O Lord. That's why we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody else? From Zoom? From Zoom? <coughs> The Lord showed two gifts. One of them shows a servant that in her heart there was a valve malfunction and she loses blood through this opening. So the, 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 the tiredness was too much, but the, an angel came and closed this and healed during a surgery and she has the health reestablished. So another gift the Lord showed that the Lord stretched the hands and through his hands an oil f was put out upon us. And there was some hearts that were dried out. So when this oil fell upon us, it brought a renew, like a moisturization like a lubrication to the hearts, bringing the hearts to the normal functioning that they're supposed to be. This is exactly what the Lord is doing. Sometimes heart talks about what? Feelings, uh, sentimental life, emotions, and sometimes we disobey the voice of the Lord to listen to our hearts and we lose the battle. Because the, the heart of man is deceitful. <coughs> but God is showing that our victory is in the hands of the Lord. From the hands of the Lord is bringing, bringing the, is coming the oil. It's being poured out upon us. The hands talks about the direction of the Lord. It's direction of God for us. It's always victory. Every time God gives us an instruction, it's guaranteed that we can obey and receive the blessing. Every time you pray to the Lord, if the God says you can rest, you can go in peace because the blessing is 
it's upon you and the fulfillment is certain so you don't be in doubt the word of God shows that every time God says is this way God honored his people <clears throat> and the people were victorious every time the God the people of God disobeyed they they lost the battle but if when they obeyed they they conquered so how many times you obeyed the voice of the Lord and God has given you the blessing on the other hand if you disobey you go into a difficult murky waters so the Lord is telling you tonight so during 40 years you didn't obey me but now you're about to enter the land it's now do it because our commitment with God it needs to be up to date it needs to be sealed so we cannot lack on that nobody will enter the kingdom of heavens because the parents are Christians the, the salvation is not something that is being transferred from a DNA or anything. No. It's you and the Lord. It's I, me and the Lord. We together, we form the body of Christ. So the body of Christ will be raptured. The church will be raptured. Where God, uh, Jesus is the head. So the brain. So this is the blessing that the God wants for us and have for us. So God is teaching us to listen to his voice and to be obedient. God, we ask you that you can receive the adoration and every prayer that was made that can be answered for our blessings. Every everyone that renew that commitment with you. Lord, thank you for allowing us to learn how to do things according to your will. Operate among our households, all the circumstances, the physical life of your people, the spiritual life, the, the families, professional lives. Put your hands upon us. As we know that there's no better place for us to be than to be under your mighty hands. And we ask you that you can bless us during this week. Make us victorious. Allow us to see your miracles. The doors being opened. And seeing all the obstacles being removed. And your name can be glorified in our lives. Take us in peace. We pray gratefully in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say that the grace, the marvelous grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. <coughs> the ones that are watching us through Zoom, uh, the deacons that are connected that can help through Zoom, and the ones that are presential here, we are all at your service to pray with you. Our next service will be Saturday night, 7.30, and Sunday also, 7.30. Thursday, we'll have a prayer service through Zoom, and Tuesday, we're going to come back to the Sunday school teaching. And slowly, we're going to come back to our rhythm. It's good for the brothers and sisters that have any suspect, any symptoms of flu, cold, or anything. Watch by, through the Zoom. If you feel that you're sick anyhow, just stay home and watch receive your blessing through the Zoom. To all, peace of the Lord Jesus.
não se abrir o mar, Deus vai te levar sobre a 